How's it going guys and welcome to part 8, currently the final planned part of my ultimate Amara guide. In this part we're going to be going over weapons and weapon anointments. I will be providing specific examples of things that generally Amara likes, however I will also be speaking more generally to more so explain exactly why these are the things that she likes, as obviously I can't really go over every single weapon that she could possibly use in this video, and as is just the general point of this series, I want you to be able to understand Amara and understand how to think about Amara so that you can come up with your own builds and playstyles instead of just relying on the usual meta gear. All of that, of course, is to say think of this video as a starting point to Amara's weapons and anointments. But with that out of the way, let's get started, starting with those anointments. And first off here, we have after using Face Slam, weapon damage is increased by 300% and Face Cast to 50%. These anointments are a little bit situational, but are very strong in the builds that can utilize them. Since they provide a lot of weapon damage, they open up a lot of possibilities, namely making great use of other multipliers. For example, these anointments go great with the Golden Rule, the Breaker, or the Mantis, class mods that can all provide stills which give a large amount of other damage types, as 250-300% to weapon damage is just a very good starting point for a lot of damage formulas. Now there is also the 150% while Grasp is active anointment, but this isn't as good as Grasp usually is only active for short amounts of time, so while it is a decent damage bonus, it's not really active too often. It can have some specific use cases, but generally isn't anything too amazing. There are a couple other options for weapon damage though, those being consecutive hits and kill stack. At max stacks, consecutive hits can provide up to 100% bonus weapon damage, which does make it very comparable to the more generic action still and 100% weapon damage. However, consecutive hits stacks on literally any damage you deal, including like dot damage, and therefore consecutive hits is just pretty much always active. So while they do provide the same amount of damage while active, consecutive hits is generally just active more often. Kill stack though is honestly usually what I prefer when I'm using one of these anointments. It is a little bit less consistent on the provided damage than the other two, but it has a higher max potential along with also providing reload speed which can be incredibly impactful for some builds. Moving away from straight weapon damage though, we then have on action still and 125% splash damage, which is just a very big source of splash damage and is incredibly good for splash focus builds because of that. This of course becomes the strongest when you have another large source of another type of damage, making it incredibly incredibly strong on builds that use the Driver, the Phase Zerker, or the Death's Blessing. Next is on Action Still End, the next two magazines will have 100% bonus elemental damage of a specific element, which of course can roll as any of the elements. This is a classic anointment, pretty solid option for the most part, and can provide further elemental coverage, however can often be outshined by other anointments for a large amount of builds. If you need weapon damage, again you have kill stack, consecutive hits, slam or cast. If you need splash damage, you have ASE splash. If you're looking for something else, then that's when falling back to next two mags is ideal. Next is while under 50% health deal 100% bonus radiation damage. This is also known as unhealthy radiation or URAD. This is incredibly situational nowadays since the nerf down to 100% and the introduction of the revolter. However, this is still another global element which Amara absolutely loves, as while the usual next two mags bonus element doesn't apply to anything other than her weapons, global elements will apply to everything, which Amara does deal a lot of damage that doesn't come from her weapons. Along with that, she also has a lot of things that will double dip global global elements like Remnant or Ties That Bind. Again, Urad is a pretty situational source of a global element, however, it does still have a use. We then have 150 over 90, which is 150% increased damage against enemies that have over 90% of their health, which is also a pretty situational anointment. It is V2 damage, which does mean that it also applies to melee hits and action still damage, so it's not only useful for weapons. And honestly, for Amara, I find myself mostly using this with melee builds. However, it is perfect for any one-tap focus build or a especially for bossing. We then have the specific action still damage anointments, which can provide 300% damage for face slam stills, or 200% for phase flare or phase cast stills. And the damage that this provides is V2 damage, which only applies to your action stills. And these anointments can provide a hell of a lot of damage to these stills, especially when built for. The most common example of this being a 200% flare damage anointment on a guardian angel, but all of them can provide great value. Now next up, we're going to be talking about the terror anointments, specifically terror damage damage and fire rate, crit, skulls, and cryo damage. All of these can be incredibly solid anointments, generally due to providing stats that Amara really likes. Terror crit obviously provides crit damage, which Amara builds tend to have very limited access to, and terror cryo is another source of a global element, which again, Amara fucking loves global elements. These two anointments are only able to roll on weapons, however, the rest that I'm going to list can roll on any piece of gear. Terror damage provides both damage and fire rate. Fire rate is a stat that Amara is decently limited in, but what's really nice is that this 
damage is V1 damage, which Amara pretty much has no access to outside of equipping a victory rush. It's pretty rare for Amara to not have access to a damage type due to how diverse her trees are in that aspect. And because she has so much access to pretty much every other damage type, V1 becomes incredibly impactful for her. And finally here, Terror Stalls just simply spawn stalls while Phase Grasp is active. This one is a little goofier and more specific than the rest, however, it can make for some pretty fun builds. Very niche, but enjoyable and completely viable. And obviously, with all these Terror Anointments, you do need to be running a Terror Focus build for them to work. These aren't very plug and play. Now finally here, there is one more anointment that I want to talk about, and that is Action Still End 40% Radiation Damage. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck this exists. It's just what it says, a 40% bonus radiation element. Why would you want this over a normal ASE or URAD? You wouldn't. I really don't know why this still is in the game. Next here though, we are going to be talking about melee weapons, which do kind of have their own set of anointments. We've got after using Phase Slam, melee damage is increased by 200% for a short time, which this can also roll on shields. However, as always, it is worth noting that these do not stack. Any set of anointments that are worded exactly the same will not stack with each other. So if you have this on both your shield and your weapon, you will only get 200%. Of course, this is just a very large source of melee damage, and obviously because of that can be very good for melee focused builds. But what will stack with that 200% is on action still end, melee damage is increased by 100% for a short time. Which again, just more melee damage, very good for melee builds. And before getting into the actual melee weapons themselves, I will mention once again that 150 over 90 is an incredibly strong option for many melee builds as well. Starting out here, we have the Blade Fury, which fires projectiles that deal both weapon damage and melee damage. The weapon damage portion deals 100% of the card damage as weapon splash damage, but with zero splash damage radius. And the melee damage deals 50% of the card value as non-elemental melee damage and cannot deal crit damage. If you would like further detail on the damage formula of the Blade Fury, I did go over it in the first part of the series on damage formulas. The Blade Fury is able to come as a masher firing four projectiles per shot or Gatling being full auto. Though generally, I do think the masher is most of the time ideal. Dealing both weapon and melee damage do come with some pretty big benefits. The main ones being that the weapon damage portion being able to crit does have some very good interactions and that the Blade Fury is able to feed Groundbreaker into itself on every single shot. Next up for actually shooting melee damage is the Face Puncher, which has generally fallen off somewhat in favor of the Blade Fury, but does still definitely have its uses. It provides more projectiles than the Blade Fury can, with the trade-off being that it deals entirely melee damage. But with all these projectiles, you can get far more procs of melee skills per shot. For example, you're getting more static charges, you're getting more body and mind, etc. Body and mind is especially strong though with the Face Puncher due to its interaction with Infusion, which doubles your body and mind procs. Next up is the Psycho Stabber, which is just straight up the best option for slapping people around, aka true melee builds. The Psycho Stabber just simply provides a 440% melee damage bonus when in hand, which is different from the 340% listed in game on the card and pretty much anywhere else online, but using 340% in actual math came out completely wrong while 440% worked out consistently, so there is actually 100% additional melee damage that is listed incorrectly on the card. And then the Bump Plug, which provides 110% melee damage on the card, although this also isn't entirely true. It doesn't provide consistent enough damage numbers for me to actually figure out what's going on with this, but it is consistently higher than what it should be by about 16 to 20 percent. However, the special effect of the butt plug is that when you hit an enemy from behind, that melee hit deals 100 percent increased damage. This is a completely separate multiplier to the formula, so it pretty much just adds a big times two after your entire damage formula, which can be a pretty big damage increase. With that being said, it can be difficult to consistently make use of this special effect. And finally here for melee, uh, this isn't a weapon, but I did forget to mention it in the previous video, but I mean it does a lot of damage, so the stinger is pretty much a weapon anyways, right? The stinger shield is just simply a nova shield, except it deals melee damage. Which of course, being melee damage means that there is plenty of potential damage within this shield, and a lot of very crazy potential for some synergies. And finally, let's actually get into weapons. And there is a massive theme here of elemental splash damage weapons, which of course does just make up a huge majority of some of the strongest weapons in the game, however, with Amara specifically, she's able to really abuse these two factors to their fullest. Again, she just has access to so many different damage types, you want to be able to use as many of those damage types within your weapons as possible. Most of these weapons I'm probably just going to rapid fire out and maybe say a couple words on, though when I think it is necessary, I will stop and talk about some a little more. Starting off is the Plasma Coil and the Free Radical. These are just two insanely strong weapons that deal a fuck ton of damage and of course are also elemental and splash damage. These two weapons are like the epitome of power creep in Borderlands 3 and you can just slap them onto pretty much any
any build and they will run you through whatever content that you need. That being said though, of course, there are other options that exist like the Kaozen, which is one of my personal favorites. The initial hit deals very good damage while also planting a sticky that'll detonate after a brief delay. This is a very strong and very versatile weapon slots into almost any build. These stickies are especially good on Amara though, as both the initial impact damage as well as the detonation damage can both ricochet damage towards nearby enemies through indiscriminate. The Storm Snipers, the Firestorm, and just the Storm have a very high base damage and again, splash and elemental. There's a specific synergy with Amara here though, as using one can actually summon the orbs from both, which is unique to Amara due to how it works with indiscriminate and infusion. For example, if you use a Storm and have Incendiary selected as your attuned element, infusion can ricochet these damages separately. So you can get a usual shock damage ricochet, which will just summon the usual shock damage orbs, or you can have the incendiary half ricochet, which will summon the firestorm orbs as the storm and the firestorm are actually the same weapon. It is just the element that makes them function differently. The clairvoyance functions very similarly to the Kaozen, except it can ricochet, which I mean, Amara can make anything ricochet, but this will just ricochet more. The clairvoyance is also able to roll as a masher, which ups the projectile count to four pellets per shot, or a gatling, which makes it full auto. Both of these are good options depending on what you're going for. The Soul Render, which summons out skulls periodically while firing, which deal 20 times the base damage of the weapon as splash damage. So this is a very high damage number that Amara can scale even further. The Herald and the Prompt Critical, really good explosive weapons that can roll in all elements. Blood Starved Beast, again, splash damage SMG can roll in all elements. The Recursion is a weapon that has definitely fallen off from the glory days of it, but it can still definitely put in some work on Amara. The Trevenator, splash damage, elemental, very high damage, perhaps the best Molly Wan shotgun in the game, and the Rowan's Toll offering ammo refund on crit, along with ricocheting out splash damage projectiles. Now, because of indiscriminate, weapons with very high pellet counts are also incredibly nice on Amara. The more pellets you have, the more chances you have to ricochet. And there are definitely weapons in BL3 that have splash damage, elemental damage, and high projectile counts. The poster child of this for Amara is perhaps the Anarchy. Able to roll with up to 20 projectiles, deals splash damage, it rolls elements, and it stacks up to 1,379% weapon damage. Which again, that alongside all of Amara's potential damage modifiers, can be pretty fucking broken. There are other options within this category though, things like the Flipper, another classic very strong SMG, Elemental, Splash, and gaining more projectiles the longer that you fire, and the Gargoyle being another very good option here. Now while I have showcased mostly Splash and Elemental, this isn't always necessary, which is why I'd also just like to bring up the Butcher. Splash is only ideal as it provides another way to scale damage and makes use of the splash damage that Amara is able to provide. But this isn't needed and there are plenty of other weapons that do still work incredibly well on her. And finally here I'll also cover some launchers which are just pretty generic. Obviously the Backburner, Plague Bear, and Kick Charger, the three big boys for bossing. But I will say out of these three, I'm usually not a huge fan of the Backburner on anyone other than Amara. It just feels significantly better to me on her than it does many of the other Vault Hunters. And a big part of that is probably that heavy rain kind of makes the projectile pattern feel a little bit more consistent. And then of course the Hive is just a fantastic rocket launcher for mobbing. But that's about everything there is that I want to go over here. And as this is the final plan part to this series, I would just like to say thank you guys so much for the support on this series. It is just really nice to read that people are getting some value out of them and really enjoying the videos. As always, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I will definitely do my best to answer them. And hey, maybe throw a couple of your favorite weapons to use on Amara down there too. And if this is the first video that you're watching in this series, I will leave a link to the full playlist down in the description below, along with a link to Loot Lemon, which is a fantastic website that can provide you more detailed information on all the weapons that I talked about, where to farm them, exactly what they do, all that. But that's gonna about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that. I'll be live right after this video goes up right here on YouTube, but also over on Twitch where there will be a link to right down in the description below. And just under that is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.